Welcome to Channel Water. Today I want to talk about why Channel Water, why you should subscribe, why you should follow this channel. I want to give you a few examples of the topics we'll talk about here in Channel Water. And they're topics that one might not expect to be connected to water. The first one, our identity, which affects our connection and human rights when it comes to water. Water is a birthright. Once you understand that we are bodies of water, that our identity is one of water and not soil, ashes, the dust, as we're usually told. No one has the right to land. There's homeless people out there. The main thing that we do have a right to is to water. So once we understand that water is our identity, we can claim our birthright to water. Next, we'll talk about how water affects the health of our bodies. So we are bodies of water that are inside of a larger body of water, the ocean and the atmosphere. Our own personal bodies are directly affected by the water we consume as we drink it, the food that we eat, and the air that we breathe. So everything we consume is affected by the quality of water that is in those elements, whether it's drinking, eating, breathing, pretty much everything you do. The next part is our environment. How does polluting the ocean and the air affect nature as a whole, all bodies of water, the plants we eat, the animals we grow and eat, and ourselves, our own bodies. Everything ends up in your body. Our bodies are a mirror to the environment. Whatever you see happening outside, happens inside. For example, we made the video The Space Aquarium, where we're trying to explain how or just to get people to understand that concept that this is a closed system. This is one body of water, one closed system. Just like when you have a fish, the aquarium gets dirty. We are in a space aquarium. There's nowhere else that our pollution goes to. People think that if they put something into the drain or down the river to the ocean, it goes away. It always comes back and it comes back to your body. So we talk about the health of our body, but also the health of our minds. Today you can see that many people struggle with their identity, with a lack of meaning and purpose in their life, not understanding how and why they belong, or what they even are. Um, and you can see it even not knowing what, most people don't know what a tree is, what an animal is, how are we connected to all of that or they live in separation, where man and nature are two different things, where we are one body, and our struggle is as one body. Our struggle is not between man and nature, it's between nature as a whole and space. The cold open space, which is basically not habitable or not hospitable to life unless you have liquid water. So here we will talk about what is your identity? How are you connected to the nature around you? What is the meaning of this life? What is the purpose we have? And try to help people get motivation through that understanding of who you are and what you are, rather than the current system, which is motivation through fear, the fear of getting, of being homeless, losing money, losing your health, not being able to afford healthcare, all of those, if you, if you notice right now, most of the motivation people have is out of fear, rather than understanding, belonging, and, and loving the part that you are, the life that you are part of. So through the understanding of how we are part of nature, how we are all one body of water, one living being on this planet working together, we will be able to help many people to understand their identity, their purpose, and find meaning in this life. We will also answer a lot of questions that we're getting all the time. And they're very good questions and they're very deep in their um, meaning and understanding of what's happening. 
questions from why is there pain, suffering, how are we connected to the nature around us, what is a tree, what is an animal, all those questions are important because we, we are split into two. Some people think that life is meaningless and purposeless, so they have a hard time understanding why even participate, or they justify pain through that. And there's the other part that thinks that everything is um, consciousness and designed, so why is there pain and suffering? Is there a good God or bad God? All those kind of ideas when in reality there's one entity that is constantly building and moving forward, creating itself a home in the universe. So once we understand that part of how we have an evolution and we have a creation at the same time, there's water which is building itself a home in the universe. So we see this evolution of creation, how we constantly move forward and make life better and we're not done, we are in the middle of the way. So for that reason, there's still pain and suffering, and we are constantly working to make our condition better. So here in the Channel Water, we can talk about those things and both understand them and help move forward through that understanding. Another subject we'll talk about here is the science of water. Right now, water is the biggest unknown in science. Most people think, um, I know what water is, I can see water, and the reality is that we don't. We don't know what water is exactly. We can't date it. It doesn't have any carbon in it. We don't know where it came from. There's two different things here on planet Earth. There's the rock and there's the water. And we know that there's a lot of water in space and it's all frozen in time right now, just ice. We can't see water so we, we know life started in water, yet we can't really see how that's happening or what is happening in water. Now with faces of water, we can see, have a glimpse into the blueprints of life and see the movements in water and the forms in water, which informs us about the beginning of life and how that came about and the understanding of what movements are, because all of life is movement, whatever it's music, social, political, it's all movement. And those movements originate in water. So we will talk about how those movements are initiated, how intention, character, all those things are connected, and um, especially connected to the form, and how things look. Through the science of water, we'll be able to talk about life in space, how can we expand out to space, our goal here of keeping life and water liquid in space and finding ways to grow and expand out. Astrobiology and there's a lot of other fields that allows us to talk freely about how is life built, how is it made, aside of the pure evolutionary point of view or religious point of view. When you look at water, you find the real point of view of what makes life what it is, how life is being constructed, and for us, the goal is really to expand and ensure water independence in space. Another field that we'll talk about here in Channel Water is mythology, theology, philosophy, psychology. There's a line that connects all the stories of how life started on this planet, of how everyone understands life through all the different religions, all the different mythologies. There's one thing we all share in common, is the understanding that water, something that water is life, water is holy, water is living. Um, there's endless points of views that keep, bring us to the same point, to the same place. That life started in water, and that water is inherently alive. So there's no life without water. But here we'll show you how there's no water without life. There's always life in water. And for many people that have contradiction with other people, other theories, other mythologies, other religions, it will be good to find the one thing that connects us all. And here we'll be able to do that through doing this cross-section across all the stories ever told from the point of view of water, which is your actual identity. 
And the beautiful thing is that just like science has laws that are obeyed all across the world, when it comes to consciousness, it's exactly the opposite. Consciousness tells a different story in each place, depending on the conditions, the environment, and what happened there. So we can see how there's elements that are passive, the building blocks of the Newtonian science that always tell the same story because they're not alive. And there's water, which always tells you a different story because in each point, in each place, in each fingerprint, in each pair of eyes, there's a different experience. And we'll be able to see those experiences and how all those infinite amount of eyes go back to one being that's experiencing itself on this planet and in space. And that brings us to the last part that is my favorite part, is art, poetry, the pure expression of consciousness, the place where we can channel through and get to the essence of consciousness, the pure expression of consciousness. And personally, here in the channel, you can see that we have artwork, we have poems, we have performances, we have dance, all those many different ways that consciousness keeps expressing itself through matter and giving us glimpses of its true nature, its creative nature, its poetic nature. Philosophy is the one thing that keeps us safe from making everything solid and set in stone. Always doubt everything and always question everything. And for me, that's where it comes. For me, there's the combination of art, philosophy, and architecture. And those three are what made Channel Water to what it is today. So I encourage you to look back at our poems and artwork and you will see that everything we talk about in the lectures and even in the scientific side of things, it comes from there. That place, that art form is the beginning of everything, of science, of religion, of the philosophies we have. That is where it all starts. Because the understanding of life is inherently beyond words. So we try to take that body of knowledge, which is beyond words, and translate it into something that people can understand. That, you know, we have a lot of different fields, so we have to share with each other the different findings we have from all the different disciplines and places in the world. So it, it's in a form trans translating and distributing information. So that, that's my personal favorite part, is really diving into the artistic side, the expression side of consciousness, and from there explaining the inherent structure of life that we're part of. So please feel free to send us any questions about those topics we talked about, and mainly about the understanding of consciousness, the understanding of water as the space where consciousness operates through. It's important to understand that even if you don't think that consciousness can have a physical form, we can say that water is the place, water is the glove on the hands of consciousness. So even if consciousness to you is something completely abstract, the soul is completely abstract, the place where it touches life, touches matter, is through water. So we will use water to understand that, whether it's in a symbolic way or in an actual way of water is the physical manifestation of the soul, of, the, of consciousness. Um, consciousness could be tangible and magical like water. I mean, if I had to choose one thing that can represent our understanding of the soul, it will be water. We can see that water is the cycle of life through matter on this planet. So just like babies are born in water, and when we bury a body into the ground, the water leaves the body back to plants, animals, river, ocean, cloud. The cycle of water is the cycle of the soul, physically or symbolic, it doesn't matter, it's, it still stands. So we would love to answer your questions. You can send them in email or in the comments below. 
and thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe, share this with anyone that you think is interested in the subject we talked about, and thank you.